Hi folks, this is Mr. Workman. I'm going to take you through a quick little tutorial and lesson on naming branched alkanes and alkenes and alkynes. I'm assuming that you already know the name for all of the straight chain alkanes. All right. So if you don't already know uh, the names and the structures for all the straight um, chain alkanes, then you need to go back and work on that before you actually view this lesson, because otherwise this lesson is going to get you all confused. <clears throat> now, so what I'm going to do is just take you through a simple explanation here of how something called um, pentane can turn into pentene or pentine, and then how we can do some branching off of that pentane. All right? Now, um, so again, I assume you know all the names for all the structures, the names and, and the structures for all the straight chain simple alkanes. So let's just start with pentane. All right, here is um, pentane. So there's the name. And what I'm going to do is draw a full structure here of pentane. Um, and of course, pentane is a five carbon chain of molecules with enough hydrogens bonded to each carbon so that each carbon is making four bonds. Okay, so now that's that's the pentane we all know. Uh, and then the chemical formula, of course, would be C5H12. All right? Um, if I'm going to draw the skeletal formula, remember the skeletal formula just shows the connections between the carbons or the bonds between the carbons. That's all it is. Okay, so again, this is pen it is one of the alkanes all right this was a little messy so I wanted to draw it for you more clearly <clears throat> well let's um, make this a little bit more interesting so um, let's say I'm gonna have not just this straight alkane but let me put a branch on it like that. Now, that's a skeletal structure formula. And now, um, if I'm going to draw the full structure, it would look like this. Now, um, I'm going to put in my hydrogens, but this is going to be the last time I put in my hydrogens for this lesson. I'm going to assume that you know how many hydrogens are needed to complete the tetravalence requirement of each carbon. Okay, remember, carbon is tetravalent, which means that it needs four valence electrons to complete its valence orbital, which also can tell you that it's going to make four covalent bonds. Well, as you can see, this kind of looks like pentane here, but there's something a little bit more interesting going on right here. Now, this um, what this essentially is, is it's kind of like a methane that's been attached to the second carbon of the pentane. All right. Now, it's kind of like a pentane with a methane bonded to the second carbon in the chain of five. Now, what I'm going to do here is just number the um, carbons in this chain of five just to make it, you know, really clear. So if that's the first carbon, this would be the second carbon. That's the third carbon. There's the fourth carbon, and there's the fifth carbon. So, res uh, you know, over here, this is carbon one. This is carbon two. That's carbon three. This is carbon four, and this is carbon five. So this carbon right here is attached to this second carbon. And this is essentially kind of like a methane molecule that just got plugged onto that second carbon. And the way we name this, what this is, is this is a methane alkyl branch. It's a branch off the main trunk or the main backbone of the molecule. And instead of calling it a methane alkyl branch every time, we're just going to call it a methyl. All right, so we take the meth and then we add the ol from the alkyl branch. So that's a methyl that's been attached to the second carbon in this chain of five, which means the name of this compound is going to be 2-methyl-pentane. 
Now again, we name the molecule a pentane because the longest chain I can find is a chain of five carbons. And it's a methyl pentane because this methyl alkyl branch has been added onto the pentane. The two tells me which carbon the methyl group got added onto. All right? Now, I think I should point out here really quickly that if I show you this, which would look like this, I'm not going to draw in all the hydrogens. I'm going to assume that you know where they all are. I can sort of draw a summary here. CH2, this is CH2. This would just be CH, and this would be CH3, and this would be CH3. <clears throat> but that doesn't, that's a little bit confusing because it looks like the bonds are between the hydrogens, but you should know that the bonds are actually between the carbons here. Now, this molecule looks like it's different than the one that I already drew previously. So it looks like maybe it should be four methyl pentane but you need to realize that this molecule this molecule is actually the same thing as this molecule because if you actually flip this first molecule around and you were to look at it from the other side it would look just like this so this is not actually a different molecule than this one and this is not a different structure than this one it's the same thing we're just looking at it from a different point of view so 4 methyl pentane actually doesn't exist we would never use uh, this numbering system because what you always do, the general rule of thumb, is to use the lowest number you can to explain where the branches are connected to the main chain of carbons. All right, now let's make this a little bit more interesting. I just showed you how to do some branching off of an alkane. <clears throat> how about if I show you something like this? Whoa, what did I do there? Well, let me sort of show you what it, that means with the carbons and maybe some H's here. So I'm going to do H3C. This will be a C. H. This will be a CH. This will be a CH2. And this would be a CH3. And the reason there's only uh, one H there, uh, here and here, is because there are there is a double bond here. Okay? Now... I'm actually, I think I should probably draw the full structure here. So, how about this? There's the H3C, there's the C, there's the H. Now what I want to do is show a double bond, which is, a, which is two pairs of shared electrons between these two carbons. And I'm going to put an H there, and here's my C with my H and my H. And then here's a C with my three H's at the end. Well, um, this is what I'm going to call pentene. And when you see this suffix at the end of, a, of, the end of these car hydrocarbon molecules, what that should indicate to you is that there's a double bond somewhere between the carbons. All right. Now, to make it specific here, I need to tell you where it is. And what we do is we um, indicate the location of the double bond by saying or naming which is the lowest number carbon that's involved in the double bond. As you can see, the lowest number carbon that's involved in this particular double bond is the second carbon. So I'm actually going to call it 2-pentene. Now, I also want to let you know that how uh, what happens with these molecules can, um, um, you know, we can change the arrangement uh, in a little way that I can actually place the hydrogens uh, in a different way. Sorry, I stumbled over my words there for a second. <clears throat> and if you notice this structure, it's the same pieces, same number of carbon, same number of hydrogens, but what on this side, what I did is I what I did is I put the hydrogen on, on the opposite side of the double bond, whereas on this molecule, I put the hydrogens on the same side of the double bond, that is sort of on top of the molecule, rather than one on top and the other on the bottom. This one is actually called trans-2-pentene, and this one would be called cis-2-pentene. All right? Trans, the word trans, I think of across... 
um, kind of like a transatlantic flight is a flight that goes across the Atlantic Ocean. And then I hear this word cis, and then I think, I think about cis, I think uh, the word same. <clears throat> so the word trans and the word cis describe where the hydrogens are relative to the double bond. All right? And that's important. Trans and cis configurations can um, be important in terms of how chemicals will behave or these different molecules will behave. This, of course, is C5H, and we can do a count here just to confirm this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 hydrogens, which, of course, is different than pentane. Uh, All right, if you go back up to pentane, it's C5H12. Uh, oh, I, you know what I didn't do? I didn't give you the chemical formula for this one. This is going to be C6H14, all right? This is C5H10. And the reason the number of hydrogens are reduced, it has to do with the double bonding here in the midst of the chain, okay? Now, I'm going to give you another example of a penta-type molecule, a chain of five molecules here. Um, or chain of five carbons, I should say. But I'm going to make it a pentine. So let's do it this way. Let's um, let's make it look like that. Uh, now, the shape of this molecule actually wouldn't zig and zag like this, but I'm doing this to make it really abundantly clear how this molecule looks um, using this diagram here. <clears throat> Now this is what's called a triple bond here that I've drawn right there. That's a triple bond. And you'll notice that there are no hydrogens on, uh, on the carbons that are a part of that triple bond. This is technically a penta molecule because there's five carbons. The longest chain of carbons I can identify is five, but it's a pentine. That Y-N-E, if you see Y-N-E, well, that means that there's a triple bond somewhere in the chain. Now, what I'm going to do again is number these carbons. This is carbon 1, this is carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. And the lowest number carbon that's involved in the triple bond is the second one, so this is actually 2 pentine. If I named this 1 pentine, the triple bond would have been here. 3 pentine, the triple bond would have been here. But it's not there, so I named it 2 pentine. Okay? Now, the trick gets, it gets a little bit trickier. Uh, we can get this more complicated by putting in multiple branches along a chain. And also what we can do is put branches associated with alkenes and alkynes. To go back to this really quickly, pentene is a type of an alkene. All right, there's a family of molecule, molecules called alkenes. And pentine, of course, is an example or a type of a family of molecules we call alkynes. All right, so it's a type of alkyne. Um, if you want to hear an explanation of even more complicated molecules with more branching, um, that'll be for another recording. Thanks, everybody. This has been Mr. Workman. Hope you learned something. Bye-bye.